JT, just start season as a whole. Offensively, anything that, that maybe you didn't expect when you arrived that you guys are doing better, worse? What are you, um, what are you thinking? I typically don't come in with too much for expectations. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been very – the last two weeks, uh, I think Kansas is a good team, and I think Towson had good football players. I really don't care what people say about them. Uh, one punt, one turnover in the last eight quarters, uh, to me, is very efficient, very good football. I think we've played relatively clean. I think we can be a lot cleaner. Um, but in general, uh, I think we have great talent offensively. I think each week we execute better and better. Um, and, uh, you know, we just keep going on this pace. I think we'll be a really good offense. You mentioned the freedom aspect, one of the things that you liked about Graham's system. And I asked him about it before you come in here. Um, he gives you freedom. How do you feel you've been, um, you know, seeing the plays he's calling or offering suggestions on plays that you want to run or, or, or him giving you a block of plays and you picking the right ones uh, or run or a pass? How do you feel you've been doing there? Yeah, I think we have great communication. A lot of times uh, it's very rare that it's like uh, you'll have a situation with the offense where it's like you have full freedom um, to do everything, and it's, it, it's not something you want to do. You spend too much time up there trying to think and figure things out, right? So a lot of it is, you know, a certain look we check to this or, you know, a certain matchup we give them this, you know, th things like that. Um, so far I've done a really good job of being – uh, you know, correct and pre-snap assessment and making the right decision. Um, but, you know, in general, it, it's, it's that kind of relationship, that kind of system. Do you give him suggestions, say, hey, let's do this? Yeah, there, there, there are things I like that I'll, that I'll talk to him about and we'll put them in and then we'll run them in practice and we'll, we'll you know, we'll see if we want to keep it. Okay. How do you, uh, how do you, how do you communicate? You know, talk about communicating with your wife and see and that. How, how do you do that? How you know, during the game while it's going on? Uh, there's not as much that goes on during the game. There's a lot that goes on during the week. Um, like a specific example from last week, uh, when I watch Red Zone, I watch Red Zone on Thursday, uh, and there's, you know, the, there, there are a few ways that cornerbacks play Red Zone man-to-man -man coverage, especially from, like, the five-yard line in. Um, Towson was a true press inside leverage team. So I talked to KP and Bryce uh, on Thursday and told them this week fades are not going to be thrown over the top. They're going to be quick back shoulder. Don't waste time on a release. Uh, go straight for the back pylon. It's going to be a quick back shoulder, and that's what you saw in the first touchdown to KP. So a lot of that goes on pr uh, during the week before the game. Then if there's anything small during the game that goes on that I need to talk to them about, you know, you just tell them. But uh, for the most part, all of that's done in the preparation phase. Important and important is it that you have – and you and Bryce, two guys that not only attack the game really hard, but intelligent enough to, 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 to know what you want and how to go about getting it. Uh, you asked that again? I didn't really hear you. Uh, attacking, attacking the game, two intelligent guys at the right receiver and quarterback who know what they want, know what they, know what they should be in, know, know how to get to how important is that. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a huge help. I've had that everywhere I've been, um, especially with, like, Amon. I'm on Ross St. Brown, who's now killing in Detroit. Um, uh, which Bryce's mental is, reminds me a little bit of Amon. Me and Amon were the, were the same exact ways, where we saw the game the same and understood it really well. I think I had that with George and Pittman. Really, I've had, it, had that with everyone, but Bryce specifically reminds me a lot of Amon in the way that, uh, one, he approaches during preparation, but two, and like I can tell Bryce something in between a play, and we'll run it the next play, and then he'll get it, and it, it'll click instantly. <laughs> run game, um, how important has it been for what you guys are doing? Uh, run game is always important. Really controlling the line of scrimmage in general uh, frees up the entire rest of the offense. If you don't control the line of scrimmage, you're fighting an uphill battle for four quarters, um, trying to be able to execute consistently in the pass game if you can't control the line of scrimmage enough to create second and six or less. Grant mentioned um, your um, talking with Zach about protections, working the constant. Walk me through that, just simple lay terms. What, 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 what things are you, types of things are you talking about when you're uh, trying to get it straight? Um, so Zach always makes the first ID, uh, which is that's, that's 
pretty much how it is everywhere nowadays in football is, you know, you centers are smart enough. As Zach's one of them that's very smart that can always make the that that, that always makes the first ID. And then he asked me a lot of questions because I change protections, uh, you know, and I, I have full control over it. Um, so Zach asked me a lot when we're talking about it, a lot of it. This is asking him asking me what I see and why I change it uh, to get us in uh, the you know, right protection. The basis of protection for me is making sure we have, you know, my five linemen accounted for. The five that I want them to block is the simplest way you could explain protection. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, a lot of that is determined by defense, but that is essentially what quarterback controlled protection is. You got hit a couple of times from the edge on passes um, in the Townsend game. Um, was that just them bringing a late stunt, a late pressure? No, that was – Cover zero, you get hit, you know, is the gist of it. Like, if you bring zero, they have one more than you have to block. So no matter what, you are you got to beat them with the ball or you're going to get hit, which is – You've got to hang yeah, on to to make the play. There. It's, it's part, yeah, it's just part of the game. Like, you know, if, if, they, if they're going to bring – and I said the same thing about Pitt, which wasn't zero, but it was, you know, six-man pressure is six one-on-one -on -one blocks which is just, it's really hard to do. Same thing in zero, and a couple of those were on run plays, so it's like those guys aren't accounted, like they're not pass protecting in general, you know, RPOs. Another one here, are you mindful that you know on a play you're going to take a hit? Um, do you try to contort your body so you don't take a direct blow? Do you not think not really, I don't, no. you know, because I mean, some, you just take it, like you, okay. helmet, pads, all that, like you, uh, you know, especially with adrenaline too. So, something you just got to do it. Like it's there. There, there's. I don't know. What to tell you. There's nothing more to it than you know. You you got to make the throw and take a hit. It's just you know part of the position. Gotcha. Evaluate the young quarterbacks. What'd you see out of there? They finally got all got game performance. All looked really good. All were the the, the best thing about it was their eyes, um, and where they were mentally. They were in the right spot every time, and that's a uh, you know the most important part. Uh, in general, like you, you know, accuracy you can develop over time. Uh, I think a sense for the pocket you develop over time. Um, there's a lot of things that take a little longer to develop, but in terms of executing the offense, being in the right spot with your eyes is entirely controllable and just on them to prepare. And they did they did a good job of it. And they were in the right spot. Every single one of them, I think, on every single play, was in the right spot doing the right thing. Nico's throw to the back of the end zone helps help Zinda put that ball in that spot and you know make it to where only Preston can come down with that pass. Uh, it's it's something it's, it's something you'll see him do a lot. You know he's very talented, uh, has a lot of arm talent, um, a, a very good kid, and it's a. Uh, like for him, I don't think he would say that's too tough. I think that's a routine throw for him. Um, you know it, it looks tough on for. Uh, you know, when you're watching it, because it is, it's, it's, it's a tough throw to make and it's elite placement. But I think he would tell you, you just, you know, threw a double move. JT, when you study Virginia Tech, what are some of the things that jump out for you with their defense? Uh, their fast flow, um, aggressive oriented defense. Uh, I think a lot of what they want to do is put you in third and long, and they do a lot of good things on third and long. They do a lot of good things, uh, you know, normal down and distance rundowns and second and long that is predicated around pushing you to third and eight plus. Um, you know, I've, from what I've seen, they've been very good on third down, and I think the best way for a defense to be good on third down is to put you in third and long. And the best way for an offense to be good on third down is to stay out of third and long, right? Like if 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 we go, I think the national average on third and eight plus uh, at least two years ago was 18 percent. So if you you know 18 per, like, like that's one out of five on third and long. That's you know it's tough living no matter who you are. Uh, or how good your team is if you're if you're playing third and long, you're not going to be very successful on third on third down. I think that's a lot of what they do. They do a good job of it. They put you behind the chains and then they make it hard to convert. JT, you watch red zone on Thursday, right? Yes. Do so you have like a schedule? Yes. The week's compact this week. Um, do you prioritize things? Do you cut things out? It, it all. It, I just have to add two days together, two times. So Sunday, I like my basic week is Sunday is uh, last three their last three games against similar offenses, uh, f find out their defensive identity, uh, coverage ID, how I, I'm going to process coverage and find it pre-play and every play, uh, and then position technique, so how each position group is taught and specific things they do that I, I care about and I'm going to know in game. Monday is rundowns, which is first and ten, second and six or less, top three coverages, pressure percent, things like that. Tuesday is the same thing, but for second and long, which is second and seven plus. Wednesday is third down, separated by medium, long, extra long, 
top three coverages, pressure percentage, and then Thursday is red zone. Friday I repeat Sunday and make sure I'm in the right spot uh, and, and, and try and see if I was correct on Sunday and then, uh, you know, kind of have that final, you know, like I'm ready to go. Uh, so I just got to combine Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I got, you know, Thursday, Friday. Or it's off in the way that I'm saying it because I'm thinking about it from a regular week, but I basically just have to combine two of those days two times. That's fine. Okay. Thank you, JT. That's good.